I have a hangover. Sorry, kids, for changing the the uh, the filming location today and the the unique outfit choices. I'm Erin Burr. Welcome to Defense Against the Dark Arts, Episode Three. Today, we are learning about the universe of mind. What you muggles know as Minecraft. And I have a confession to make. I am a muggle-born teacher. That word is a slur. We use it in my class. Triggers in the description. I have a nasty hangover. I was partying it up with a few Death Eaters last night. Dumbledore, Ron was there. There were strippers. It was a beautiful time. There was a bubble tea. There was a phoenix. There was a lot going on. So anyways, uh, today's lesson is about Minecraft. I know I'm the laughing stock of Hogwarts. One day, Armani swears I'll be fired. But uh, we need to get on with today's lesson. So uh, pick a character from Minecraft you wish you could be. Get your notes up. No, this is very real. It involves reality shifting. This lesson is extremely dangerous. So if you even have a slight chance of fear, to quote Kevin Feinberg, there's the door. Today, we're learning how to do stuff with magic. Oh, I don't see. All right, so what is reality shifting, kids? Reality shifting is a form of astral projecting. Some people don't believe that. People who don't know that are idiots. It's a form of astral projecting into alternate realities. You can spend your entire life there, it's perfectly safe. Some people think it's dangerous to stay for more than six weeks or months. You could spend an attorney there. But it's dangerous to reality shift because you become inherently attached to that other reality. You wish to live your life there. For example, let's say I was secretly Bill Cipher or Ford or Dipper or something and I wanted to go to the My Little Pony universe. If I went there, I would become attached to those Equestria ponies. I would never want to leave. Eventually, I would be tempted to respawn and stay in that world forever. Respawning is dangerous. <laughs> We're not going to touch on that shit today. We just know that it's taboo. If you ever have questions about respawning, come to me and I'll snap you right out of it. Because that shit, that shit's dangerous as fuck. Um, but re <sighs> respawning aside, reality shifting is perfectly harmless. As long as you don't make a script, you should be fine reality shifting. Scripting is when you essentially design your, your dream reality. It's a GPS, it plugs you into going to those alternate realities, it manifests that reality to you, and usually a script chooses you the way a wand does. You essentially are meant to find that script, the script chooses you, you bond with it like a piece of paper to your skin, or a tattoo. That script is with you forever. Any changes you make are a different script, but that script is bond to your soul for eternity. It's like a spirit animal, you make a joke, sorry kid, it's on you. you it's like a kin, you can't get rid of it no matter how hard you try to scrub it off, you little bastards. It's stuck to you for eternity. Reality shifting is very dangerous. And the multiverse will punish you if it thinks you're doing it wrong. It will kill you. It'll maim you. But don't let this dissuade you from doing it. So Minecraft, as all games, are not just games. Fiction and reality, they're the same fucking thing. Sorry. They are. Um, there's no such thing as fiction. Every ounce of lies and fiction, it is real. <laughs> even, even silly let's plays and ARGs. They are real, kids. Don't let that dissuade you from not telling stories, singing songs. I told you this class would be dark but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is Defense of the Dark Arts. You want to send them to Voldemort? You want to send them to those Death Eaters? Your kids are going to have to face the truth that these things are real, and they should terrify you. You want to learn? you got to grow some gills. you got to learn some bubble butts. you got to get some Dementor and Hagwat, and you got to stand up for yourself to learn that lightning. And we'll get to the black magic when you guys are ready, but <laughs> right now, your kids aren't ready. Every fantasy story you've ever read is real, and you can visit it, but you gotta be careful, because when you become that person, you'll never want to leave. This is your home, okay? Pokemon's not your home. Some versions of Hogwarts are not your home. Earthsea is not your home. Zeus and Olympus and Percy Jackson is not your home. Those are versions of you, and you should explore them, and they all kind of exist here as well, you just need to find them. But right now, in this concrete muggle-born reality where you are trapped, is your bloody home, you fuckers. And you need to be here. 
I'm going hard on you. I told you at the beginning of this class I'd be hard on you fuckers. I told you it's a hard class. I'm the laughing star of Hogwarts, but it is a difficult class. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You are learning to defend yourself. You are Dumbledore's army. Everyone thinks he's dead. He's not dead, you fucks. There's something about Hogwarts you all don't know. Nobody ever dies. In a way, you're all trapped here forever. A piece of you stays with this school forever, and I know that scares the shit up you, especially you Muslims and Hindus. But you always stay here. It becomes peaceful. It becomes exciting. You have the dream bubbles, the realms, your greatest memories, your greatest triumphs stay with Hogwarts for eternity like a moving picture. And you know what? It is the best thing ever. Even if you're bullied like Potter and James and Anna and Ebony and Agana, and you don't know half those wizards, and Lockhart did all those things, but let's not talk about Lockhart yet. We'll redeem him later in my class, I swear it. I can see you, Jimmy, you're scared to death. I swear it's not as bad as you think. And it's fine to have weird fantasies, and it's fine to tell weird stories, and it's fine to kill your characters off and write Mary Sue's. Don't let the fact that fiction is real scare you out of this. In ancient Egypt, it's called bleeding cards. The myth goes, Osiris was bored one day, so he was playing with cards. Ra was there. And I said, dear brother, because they were brothers, Egypt's weird. What are you doing with these nonsense deck here? The game was a modern one called Hero Battle. We'll, we'll get to that later. What are you doing with these cards? They're nonsense. They're in a foreign tongue, because Osiris speaks everything. Why must you play with such nonsense? And they were actually runes in some versions. For you Norse pagans, I know I have a few of those in my class. What are you doing with these nonsense items? And Ra and Osiris, sometimes they switch roles in the story, he goes, These are not nonsense, brother. I just wish I could live through these things. I just wish I could be like these heroes. I tell stories through these cards. I breathe these cards. I wish I could bring them to life the way I brought Egypt to life. The way I, en he says enslaved here, enslaved Anubis. The way I brought out of slavery Egypt. Sometimes he says enslaved Egypt. It's a weird story. Um, I wish I could bring the chackles to these cards and free Egypt through them. And Ra goes, I see, brother. I see what you desire. Humanity would hate you for eternity. And Osiris goes, no. Humanity would love me. They would love me, Osiris. And th it's a weird story. The perspective keeps changing in it. And Ra goes, okay. Okay, fine. Do this. And he takes a piece of the sun, which is his head and his mouth and his nose and his dick. And he goes, let's go. And he goes... Does it to Rob. It Again, the names keep changing throughout the story. And Osiris takes it and chokes on it, and then he slits open his wrist, mm -hmm, triggers in the description, and pours his blood into the cards, and they become alive. And they, and they become gods, the first ever gods to exist. And they go, why have you done this to us? We were happy. We were free. We are now shackled to the chains of this world, never to be believed in. You are a monster, and they said some racial slurs here. You are a creature of darkness. You are evil. In some versions, this is why black people are black. It's a dark story. You are a bad man, Osiris. You are the worst of the worst. And Osiris goes, no, no, no. You will bless Egypt, America. Because he knew what America was. In some versions, it's called Anaya, but it's implied to be America. It's weird. Otaya, Onana, Okinokana. And he goes, fine. But no one will ever know we are real until the time is ready. And until then, we will do our work in secret. And when you are ready, you will come with us. And Egypt will be destroyed. Replaced by Rome, Calzone, and Ogana. And these are the different states. You can speculate where they are. I know where they are because I travel the world. But until then we will be forgotten. And they zapped out of existence, never to be seen again. And Osiris cried, and he cried, and he cried for 10,000 nights, and 10,000 days, and 800 years, until now. And that is why fiction and reality are the same thing. There's also a Norse version, an Irish version, an English version, an American version, a Native American version, and uh, there, I know what you're saying, little G. We're not going to talk about the Mayan version here because that involves Anubis too and that's a really racist story in this class. We're not doing that. Not yet. So fiction and reality are the same thing. And I just scared half of you, but we need to talk about it because I'm not going to sugarcoat my class, kids. I'm not going to. So, now that you know what that is, that's partially how reality shifting works and why it's possible. Alright? Good. That's how it's possible. Now that we know about Hogwarts, let's talk. A p 
possibilities. There are different methods to shift. Everybody has to do a process to shift. Oh, I have to go to sleep. I have to write a script. I have to go in the Alice in Wonderland tunnel. You don't need any of that. You just need to close your eyes, feel your heart, imagine very vividly, and you can get there. All you need is imagination. You can literally shift through your daydreams. It helps to have a vessel, a power, a breath. It helps to have a technique, but if you're really skilled at magic and you know what you need to do, you just take your hand and feel it to your heart. You can do a pose, focus on where you need to go, and bam, you're there. You can focus on your vessel, though. You need to sculpt yourself almost out of clay, and it helps if you have a toy to do this with, and you can be there in your dream reality. Focus on the details, focus on what you want, and go, but remember, kids, it is dangerous as fucking hell. So what's this have to do with mind? Well, I made a promise to a boy who watches me that we talk about his dream reality. The world of Minecraft is not just a game, it's an alternate reality that was given to the creator, who's not a douchebag, by the way. I work with the goddess of fame, and she tells me everything about everybody, and he is very misunderstood, and so is Yandere Dove, but we're not touching that bitch over here. No, 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 that guy's on my bad side today. But, um, basically, <laughs> it's not for me, that's a good guess. Basically, um, Minecraft, we're gonna do a spell. This spell is an ancient one. It will turn you into a non-human creature in that world. You will be the villains. You will be bound to that world by blood, and you will have to kill, sacrifice, and do evil things. You are doing this to do learn immorality. When the lesson of morality is over, you will come back with the powers of the creatures. These creatures can be endermen, those explodey things, what are those called again? Creepers. Slendermen, or any other things. Villagers are a weird one. You don't want to be a villager. They are very uh, monotheistic, creepy, and cult-like, but you can try it. <laughs> That's not what I'm doing in my class, but you can attempt. You learn a song, you learn a language, then you're to come back to this class, leave a video, response, or a comment, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Or you'll just, these videos are not meant to be engaged with, but you know. You know. We do do things differently in Muggleworth than at Hogwarts. I dig these videos are replications of my classes at Hogwarts. I care about Muggles. I am a Muggle. I was born to a Muggle family. I don't care if I lose half my class. They get upset when I mention this. But I'm sorry. Muggles belong in Hogwarts too. Did I ever tell you folks about the time I brought <laughs> a time I brought uh, technology to Hogwarts? The kids started abusing it like slaves, and that's why it left. Technology comes alive at Hogwarts. You're not supposed to do it. But I did it anyways, and I got in trouble, and then the phoenix rose from the ashes, and Harry had to come back and kill it again, and I almost died, and Longcard was there, and Sirius was there, and we all partied it up afterwards, and everybody forgot I existed for a bit, and it was it was a whole story. Anyways, that's a homework assignment. We're taking you to the Minecraft universe. I'll make another follow-up video, and that's basically it. Enjoy your friends of the dark arts. And good luck. May the odds be ever in your favor. Aaron Burr out.